In this video, I'm going to make fun of some people, including a uh, fellow YouTuber. If you don't like that sort of thing, you probably don't want to watch this video. Howdy YouTubers, it's your not-so-friendly neighborhood DFH. The YouTuber in question is called First Cause Argument, and he has a video uh, entitled Hilbert's Hotel that I watched recently and left a comment on. The comment that I left was... Yes, dealing with infinite amounts is absurd, in the sense that they aren't what we're used to. But let me get this straight. Craig argues that actual infinities cannot exist because it would lead to Hilbert's Hotel, and the reason why Hilbert's Hotel cannot exist, as he states at 4 minutes and 13 seconds, is just because it can't? Bear assertion, anyone? Here's the actual clip from the video so that you can hear what I'm talking about. Hilbert's Hotel is absurd. Mind you, it's logically correct for the mathematician, but it's impossible for something like Hilbert's Hotel to really exist. You can describe it on paper, but it cannot exist in reality. Illustrations like these show that the existence of an actually infinite number of things is impossible. Now what you'll notice in that clip is exactly what I said in my comment, that uh, Craig argues that actual infinities can't exist by giving us the example of Hilbert's Hotel. Except that he doesn't actually say uh, Hilbert's Hotel leads to these absurd, uh, paradoxical uh, seeming uh, results. And that's why actual infinities can't exist. He just basically says uh, the hotel can't exist, and that's that. And it seems like a bare assertion to me. But if you wanted to say that uh, the absurd uh, consequences that he was giving are the reasons why uh, Hilbert's Hotel can't exist, that isn't really a very good argument. To say that something, well, that leads to something which is strange and counterintuitive, therefore it can't be true, well, geez, then we'd have to throw out uh, special and general relativity because they lead to uh, strange counterintuitive conclusions, and we would have to throw out quantum mechanics. In order to properly conclude that the hotel can exist because it leads to these strange conclusions, they would have to show that it's these strange conclusions that somehow cannot be. And yet Craig himself admits that these things are not logically inconsistent. So they could exist. Uh, so you could say, well, maybe they can exist in some possible world, but not this possible world. Well, then you would have to show what it is about this physical world that makes it so it can't exist, and he doesn't. Again, he just goes on bare assertion and, gee, look how weird that is. It's so weird, clearly that can't exist. That's not a good argument. So how does Mr. First Cause Argument respond to my comment? Well, he says, listen to the video, will ya? Is it too damn hard for you atheists to do that? Craig does not deny that actual infinities exist. He says it cannot exist in the real world, i.e. physical world. And he showed why Hilbert's Hotel can't exist. You'd know that if you'd watched the video. Apparent stupidity, anyone? I can just hear him going, rah, 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 while he's typing that. Um, he showed why Hilbert's Hotel can't exist? No, he didn't. He just gave some conclusions which seemed counterintuitive. That isn't showing why it can't exist. And it's funny. You'd know that if you'd watched the video. I gave the exact spot where he made the claim at 4 minutes and 13 seconds. I couldn't, do, I couldn't do that if I didn't watch the video. And then, so, when I go to make a comment to First Cause Argument to explain myself and say, and say you know, that uh, he didn't really show why Hilbert's Hotel can't exist. All he showed is that uh, the, the, uh, what comes from Hilbert's Hotel is kind of absurd. Except, when I tried to leave the comment, I discovered that First Cause Argument blocked me. He blocked me after one comment. What's up with that? People who block people after one comment are people who aren't interested in a discussion. They're not interested in talking about whether or not something is real or something is true, or helping people understand uh, why they may be wrong, or possibly being wrong themselves, they're not interested in that. They just want to have their say and they don't give a shit about anything else. And it's funny because as I'm looking through the comments, 
I get down to a comment that he apparently left six months ago. Listen to this. There is no such thing as an irrational number. That's a pop scientific term. Numbers are necessary and invariant and universal. No such thing as an irrational number. Dude, do you even know what an irrational number is? It doesn't mean that the number is irrational in the sense that, ooh, it acts irrationally. It means it can't be expressed as a ratio, as a, uh, as a whole number divided by a, another whole number. There's no such thing as an irrational number? What in the world is square root of two, then? Going back to Craig's original objection with Hilbert's Hotel, uh, Craig seems to be stuck on the fact that in Hilbert's Hotel, the infinite hotel, uh, the hotel can be full and yet still admit more guests. And that seems like a paradox, like a contradiction. But it's only so because of our experience with finite hotels, with finite sets. In the case of a finite hotel with a finite number of rooms, if there is a person in every room, then they can't admit more people. But it's just not the case with uh, a finite, with excuse me, with an infinite hotel and infinite sets. Infinite sets don't work the same way that finite sets do. That doesn't make them impossible. It just makes them different. It makes them counterintuitive, not like what we're used to. And if you'd like to go ahead and watch the rest of the video and see if he gives more of a context to it, uh, go right ahead. I'll leave a link in the description box. But he doesn't. Dr. Craig simply asserts that such a thing can't be, and the only possible justification, even though he doesn't state it explicitly, is because it acts weird. Poor argumentation on the, on the part of Craig. And <laughs> ridiculous action on the part of first cause argument. Oh no, somebody uh, disagreed with something uh, they must be stupid, and so I'm going to block them and never hear from them again because I don't really ever want to hear anything that uh, contradicts my beliefs. That's ridiculous. Anyway, take care, everyone. And remember, don't just swallow it whole. Make sure you chew it up first.